Hey, so I want to make a quick video here on slope intercept form with a few more practice problems so that you can look through it and see how to put it in that form. So uh, here's slope intercept form. It's y equals mx plus b. Now with this, the m and the b are just actual numbers. So the y and the x are going to stay y and x. They're going to be variables, the y and the x. But then m and b will be replaced with numbers. So here's some examples down here that I put. It could be y equals 3x plus 4. It could be y equals 4 sevenths x minus 6. It could be y equals negative 3 halves x plus 7. So even though here it shows plus b at the end, it could be subtract a number, subtract a number. Okay? It could be a fraction. It could be a whole number. It could be positive or negative. So again, the m and the b are numbers, any kind of numbers, positive, negative, fractions, whole numbers. That's what the m and the b are. And then the y and the x both stay as y and x. And that's going to be slope-intercept form. So here's a few practice problems. I put eight of these right here. Uh, they start off easier and then they get harder. So look at these problems. I would suggest trying this on your own first. Look at these eight problems. Make sure to pause this video and then I just show uh, the answers and I'll explain those to you as I go through. So try number one on your own right now and then number two and I'll go through it. So here is number one. Again, we need y equals mx plus b. This is called slope intercept form. It's also referred to as functional form in your book. It's the same thing. So first step, we need y by itself. Let's box in this 4y. Let's get rid of everything else on the same side of that equal sign. Here's the equal sign. On the left side is where we see the y. We also see a positive 3x, so let's subtract 3x on both sides. Once we do that, this will cancel out the 3x and that's the purpose. We want that to go away. We want y to be by itself. We're going to be left with the 4y on the left side. Right here, we cannot combine these. They're not like terms. So remember, like terms, if there was an x next to the 8, we then could combine these two and call it 5x, but there's no x next to the 8, so we cannot combine it. All we do now is just rewrite this right here horizontally. And remember, because we want the mx to come first, or in this case, the negative 3x, this needs to be written first and put the 8 second. Then from here in this blue line right here, one more step, divide by 4. So y is by itself. Make sure to divide every single term by 4. Doing so, 8 divided by 4 is 2. Over here, you don't have to simplify this. Keep it as a fraction, right? Negative 3 fourths x, negative 3 fourths x. Second one, let's try this one. Again, you're going to box in the 8y get rid of anything next to it, and then follow the same procedure that you just did for number one. So number two, we box it in. We subtract 15x on both sides. We get this right here in blue. Make sure, again, we put the negative 15x first, then plus 56. Do not put 56 minus 15x. Although they're equivalent, we want it to be in this form. After having this right here, divide each one by 8. Keep this as a fraction. That is okay and keep this, um, this one don't keep as a fraction because you get a whole number answer. Okay, so if you can simplify it to a whole number answer, do that, or let's say if this was like, um, well again, it would be a whole number. If this was 16x over eight, you would divide it to get two and so forth. But in this case, keep it as negative 15x over eight, which is negative 15 over eight x, that's the same thing. So try number three and number four, and then we'll uh, resume the video and I'll show you those. So number three, just like the other ones, let's box in the 3y. Again, we need to put it in y equals mx plus b. And like we said before at the beginning of the video, m and b are just numbers. They could be negative, they could be positive, they could be fractions, they could be whole numbers. y and x will stay the same, and then we just change the m and the b into numbers. We need to box this in, subtract 10x on both sides, put the negative 10x first because we want the mx to come first. From here, divide each term by 3, and we will get this. Number four, same thing. In this case, it's a little bit easier because after we box in the y, we see that the coefficient in front of y, there's nothing there. It's that imaginary one. So you subtract 11x, and that's the only stuff you have to do. You don't have to divide because there's no number in front of y. There's an imaginary one. So we have y equals negative 11x comes first, and then minus 5 at the end, and we have it in this form, y equals mx plus b. Again, although it says plus b, it could be minus b because this is the same as plus a negative five is the same as subtract five. Okay, uh, try numbers five and six right now. Number five, 
in uh, actually the next four or five, six, seven, and eight, you're gonna have to use the distribute property. So it's a little bit more challenging. So it's the same procedure that we just did, but now with an extra step. We look at this and we say we have to combine like terms, simplify what we can first before even boxing in variables and before moving things to different sides of the equation. Let's first simplify. Right here, we know this means distribute. So this is negative four times X, negative four X, negative four times negative two, positive eight. Now from this spot here in blue, this line here, it's the same as the previous four problems. Box in the variable, get rid of everything else next to it on the same side of the equal sign. Do the opposite operation instead of add three, subtract three. We get y by itself, negative four x. Uh, positive eight minus three is positive five. This will be the final answer. Number six, try this one and then I'll show you how to do it. Again, same thing, distribute negative two to both terms, negative two x, negative eight. Box it in. Opposite of minus three is add three, do it to both sides, and here is your answer. All right, try the same for seven and eight. They have fractions here, but it's the same exact thing. Uh, you're just gonna have to remember how to multiply a fraction by a whole number. So to do that, make that whole number into a fraction, put it over one, and just multiply straight across on the top and the bottom. So right here, one fifth times X is one fifth X. One fifth times negative two, it's really negative two over one. Multiply straight across, two times one is two, five times one is five, keep the sign the same. So we get this right here. Then from here in blue, just like the other previous problems, box in the Y, opposite operation with the whatever's next to it, subtract three on both sides. Here's where it gets, um, it's, well, this is more of a review, how do you add and subtract fractions in whole numbers, right? So for this one, I showed this in multiple steps. So first off, this cancels out, right? That's the purpose, we get Y by itself. The one fifth X is just gonna drop right down here. The negative two fifths will drop right here. And then minus three, I just wrote it horizontally for now. But these two right here are actually like terms because they're numbers, right? We have a fraction and a whole number. We can combine those. So the next slide I'm gonna show you how to combine those. Put three as a fraction, three over one. And now when you add or subtract, you find the LCD, all right? So from here, we have, I just rewrote this, I dropped the y down, the 1 fifth x, minus 2 fifths I dropped down. 3 over 1, we need to find the LCD. 5 and 1, the LCD is 5. I can multiply both the top and the bottom by 5, and I get 15 over 5. Then we can subtract, we keep the denominator of 5 the same. Negative 2 minus 15 is negative 17. Here is your final answer. Same thing for number 8. So you should pause the video now, try number 8, and then refer back to 7 and then check your work. Number eight, same thing. We want to distribute the one third to each of these. One third times X is one third X. One third times negative three. Uh, I wrote it over here to kind of show you. Here is one third multiplied by negative three over one. You can multiply straight across. You get negative three over positive three, and that cancels out to give you negative one. So after you distribute right here, you get this line right here, which is in blue. You then box in the y, you add three to both sides. y is by itself, it equals one third x negative one plus three is gonna be positive two. Here's your final answer. Okay, that was a quick review of slope and slope intercept form. There's also a link to IXL problems. Please work on these. You can do 10 of these a day. And if you get it incorrect, it will show you step-by-step -step how to do it. Okay, so that's it for that. Just again, a quick review on slope. Please look through that, try the problems and complete the IXL problem.